Tonight, which celebrity speaks out about sexuality? And in our Idol Watch, who sang their last song this week? Plus, which two artists just signed multi-million dollar deals? We'll find out. This is RMU Tonight. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this edition of RMU Tonight for April 3rd, 2008. I'm Amy Morgan. And I'm Kevin Williams. For the next 30 minutes, we'll be your source of music, movies, games, and gadgets here at RMU. There's a lot to get to, so let's get started. We begin tonight with RMU's top story. This week marks the second week that RMU students have been protesting the loss of Super Saturday. Still, the university backs its decision despite student protest. RMU TV's Bill Romango had a chance to sit down with Dean of Students John Michael Lanko about this year's spring activities. Spring Fest 2008, a lot of students here at Robert Morris had questions that they needed answered. Well, I asked those questions to Dean Michael Lanko, and here's what he had to say. I'll be honest with you, one of the big reasons we had to look at this is that the, the amount of underage drinking and the yeah. public intoxication that was occurring, and it was getting out of control. This actually came up um, over a year ago. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, well, before, spring spring, yeah, before Spring Fest 07, mm -hmm. to say, geez, you know, what are we doing here? We need to look at mm -hmm. the safety, the security, the liability, um, our students. You know, we want them to have a good time, but we want to mm -hmm. do it in a way that yeah. you know, represents the school well and is, is good for them. Mm -hmm. And we allowed the 07 one to go, and that one, you know, after observing it, was mm -hmm. probably one of the larger ones that we've ever experienced. Yes. Very few people complain when the tuition letter went out that it went up 9%, yeah. but the memo goes out and says Springfest canceled and suddenly there's a <laughs> Facebook site with yeah. 900 members. So it's a little interesting that where yeah. our priorities are set here. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I think it's just important for people to understand that this was not an easy decision, mm -hmm. that when, when we look at what as an institution what our role is is to protect our students and yeah. we're also required to abide by the law. Yeah. And I, I, I just think that people need to respect that. Mm -hmm. On that Saturday, if people wish to go out and barbecue and throw a Frisbee and play volleyball, and yeah. they're having fun with one another, if they're not drawing attention to anything and they're being mm -hmm. responsible and safe, so be it. It still rages on. One thing is for certain, Spring Fest 2008 will not occur this year. However, there will be some fun events, so you'll definitely want to look out for those and take advantage. Despite protests and signage, the university has still not reversed its decision to lift the ban and as of the end of semester draws near, hope is starting to dwindle that there will be a Super Saturday 08. Many have fond memories of Super Saturday's past, while those new to the university have never ever actually seen it in real life. So we here at RMU tonight decided to go back in time and see why this tradition is so hyped every year. And to show how much of a tradition it is, here's some ar archive footage from the Robert Morris College, Super Saturday, 1996.
So did you enjoy the Velcro wall? <laughs> I'm kind of sad that I won't get to see the Velcro wall or, yeah, any, or, or anything. Yeah, or the gladiatorness. So what are, what are your plans then for the Saturday before finals? Um, my friends and I were talking about it. I'm probably going to like barbecue anyways, um, bring some steaks maybe. We're going to do that. The one in Burgers. Front of, the one in front of Ross and Hamilton. Yeah. You should join our party. So Kevin and I can join each Come other. Come <laughs> to the Ross and Hamilton grill <laughs> picnic table right out front there, and it'll be an RMU Tonight party. Nice party. So let's move on now. And here's the latest in music news. Two of today's most established artists are now going to be around for a long time, thanks to, thanks to a live nation Record, according to Billboard magazine and the Chicago Tribune, Live Nation, one of the world's biggest concert and music retailers, has just signed two major deals. One, a 10-year deal with rapper Jay-Z. The other, a 12-year deal with rock legends U2. The deal includes new albums and major touring. The total value of U2's, of U2's deal was not disclosed, although Jay's is estimated at $150 billion, with a B, dollars. And it's still another month before the much-anticipated autobiography of Bobby Brown hits shelves. But today the book is getting some early controversy. In Bobby Brown, The Truth, The Whole Truth, and Nothing But, Brown claims that ex-wife Whitney Houston first introduced him to drugs. Uh, Brown goes on to say that during their 15-year marriage, both himself and Whitney had relationships outside of their marriage. Brown and Houston were married in 1992 and divorced last year. At the height, And they were married during the height of their popularities. Together they have one daughter who is now 15 years old. REM lead singer Michael Stipe has been out about his sexuality for some time now. The 48-year-old singer has been candid about being gay. He described him himself as a queer artist in a 2001 interview with Time magazine and named an Out magazine Out 100 list of gay celebrities. In recent news he was interviewed by Spin magazine and revisited the topic. He says that he was always honest with people close to him, but now recognizes that it is important for people in the public eye to be open about such matters. According to Yahoo.com, he quotes, Now I recognize that to have public figures be very open about their sexuality helps some kids somewhere out there. Their new album, Accelerate, is now available in stores. Fallout Boy's bassist Pete Wentz admitted to MTV that he tried to kill himself a couple of years ago. Wentz says that he was in his car and overdosed on the drug Ativan while listening to the song Hallelujah. That effect, the Ativan is a drug that affects chemicals in the brain that may become unbalanced and cause anxiety. Luckily, his mom was called by his boss because he called off work and was slurring his words. They immediately rushed the, Wentz to the hospital and talked about his suicide. And now he is involved with Half of Us Suicide Prevention Campaign, alongside the likes of Mary J. Blige and Smashing Pumpkins' Billy Corgan. So, what songs are on the top of the charts this week? Let's take a look. Top five music videos. Number one, Mariah Carey, Touch My Body. Number two, Rihanna, Don't Stop the Music. Number three, Jordan Sparks and Chris Brown, No Air. Number four, Alicia Keys, No One. And number five, Britney Spears, Break the Ice. Now here's a look at the top ten radio singles, courtesy of RadioAndRecords.com. Coming in at number one is Sarah Bareilles with Love Song. Chris Brown moves and falls out of the top spot, down to number two with With You. Flo Rida and T-Painter at number three with Low. Jordan Sparks and Chris Brown number four with Low. Miley Cyrus is at number five with See You Again. Number six is Rihanna's Don't Stop the Music. Number seven is Buckcherry with Sorry. Usher and Young Jeezy move up into the top 10, up to number 8 with Love in the Club. Mariah Carey is at number 9 with Touch My Body, and, and new artist Leona Lewis is at number 10 with Bleeding Love. The top three albums, and they are all debut. Number 1, Day 26, Day 26. Panic at the Disco, Pretty Odd. And number 3, Counting Crows, Saturday Nights and Sunday Mornings. Those look all like great... Uh, music, but I was in New York City this past week and I actually bought a CD and mm -hmm. it's an artist that no one's heard of. What? Which one? Kathleen Edwards. I, she's kind of alt country. She's really kind of independent and I've listened to it about 15 times in the last few wow. days. But I didn't pick you as a country fan. Yeah. 
Really? Don't you remember on Halloween I was a trucker? Oh, that's right. I did yeah. forget that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, up next, which new flicks hit the big screen this weekend? And which one should you go see? We'll find out right after this. Stick around. Tomorrow is Friday, and that means that new movies are coming to a theater near you. Let's see which ones make their debuts this week. In theaters this week, Leatherheads, Flight of the Red Phoenix, Jack and Jill vs. The Balloon, Backseat, Meet Bill, My Blueberry, Nights, <laughs> Nims Island, Sex and Death 101, Shine a Light, and The Ruins. And uh, that one is a foreign film. I actually was reviewing that, and it looked quite interesting. Oh, wow. So a lot of movies. <laughs> yes. Well, last weekend, a ton of good movies made their way into theaters. So let's see which ones brought in the most people and the most money with the box office numbers. At number one was the, was the movie 21 with $24.1 million. Horton Hears a Who was at number two with $17.4 million, followed by superhero movie Tyler Perry's Meet the Browns and Drill Bit Taylor. Shudder, the horror film, was at number six with 5.2 followed by 10,000 BC. The MTV film Stop Loss debuted at number eight with only $4.5 million, followed by College Road Trip and The Bank Job at number 10. One of the movies coming to theaters this weekend is Leatherheads, the pigskin comedy starring George Clooney, Renee Zellweger, and John Krasinski. But does the movie go the whole nine yards? Here's a sneak peek. I love playing football. For a special breed of men called Leatherheads, the rules were simple. You hit anybody that comes near him. There were no rules. Oh, I like him. But when the game they love was going under. We're broke now, our season just started. Time to pack it up and go home. Dodge Conley had the plan. It's your intention to legitimize professional football? To build it back up. Carter Rutherford leaves Princeton to play for the Duluth Bulldogs. What? Give me here, Carter Rutherford, the bullet. War hero football boy? They've got a completely different style, Carter. How are you going to adjust to them? Maybe they'll just kind of adjust to me. So you're a sports writer? Why not? Hey, what's a girl doing in the press box? Certain jobs are always going to be done by men. Big strapping man? Now, two of football's biggest stars will find themselves competing. The real story is the matchup between the bullet and teammate Don Conley. Over the one woman. They're the kind of cocktail that comes on like sugar but gives you a kick in the head. Who can throw them for a loss? You can get a slickest operator in Duluth. But being the slickest operator in Duluth is kind of like being the world's tallest midget, if you ask me. It's too bad we know each other so well. We might have gotten along. Well, I'll live. Alone. Plays we ran at Princeton. A lot of our plays are pretty strong. These are a lot like your plays, only a little more effective. 
I've got some decisions to make. In a minute. Where were you two? Out. Nowhere. This spring. The game of professional football is coming of age. That means rules! I mean, never played any game clean. Let the games begin. Throw one. You're the injured party, you get the first punch. Leatherheads. Stay away from my right knee. Watch my left shoulder. Also my right hind quarter. Well, you wouldn't punch me in the back, would you? Let's just go for the face. And just in the face. <laughs> To me, Leatherheads looks funny and promising, although the reviews are a little mixed. Michael Phillips of the Chicago Tribune says, Tragically, Leatherheads is just okay. While Rafer Guzman of Newsday says, Clooney imbues Leatherheads with an irresistible charm and intelligence, raising it far above the average period piece. So with mixed reviews like these, the only way to decide whether Leather Leatherheads is a good movie is to go out and see it yourself, which is what I would recommend. It looks okay. Like, it looks kind of cheesy in a way, don't you think? I, I think it looks kind of funny. It should be interesting. I like the back in time kind I of I like the movies. actress. Uh, like, Re Renee Zellweger's okay, but I like John Krasinski from we'll The Office. So. Yeah, we'll have to see. <laughs> yep, we'll see. Well, in other movie news, it wouldn't be RMU tonight without a preview of the newest horror flick. Here's a look at The Ruins, a new thriller starring Jonathan Tucker and Jenna Malone. Let's take a look. Pass. I want to go. Come in. This feels weird, Jeff. Why won't they come near us? Wow. It's beautiful. The critics from RottenTomato.com feel that the lineup of characters sounds like a setup for a joke, but the followers, followers of the horror handbook on movie stereotypes closely. The book is well written, but the characters are on the island side. The movie's monster, which let, leads it to its sci-fi element, is fairly ridiculous, which makes it perfect for a Hollywood big screen adaptation then. What, are you going to see the movie, Kevin? Um, no, because I don't pay and see bad movies. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look that good. It just looks cheesy. It looks like it, like no one's going to remember it in a year. So it doesn't look very good at all. I so, don't think so I'm just going to skip it. Oh well. You can skip. But it. we go now from horror to fantasy. Well, science fiction that is. And unlike the typical sci-fi movie, which is cast with unknowns, our next trailer, Nim's Island, stars an established and award-winning actress. Starring Jodie Foster, as well as Gerard Butler and Abigail Breslin, here is Nim's Island. Adventure writer Alex Rover has sold millions of books to fans all over the world. And she's done it all without ever leaving the house. Do you always like this? Like what? Scared to get out and touch the world. I'm not scared to go out. Rover's biggest fan is a girl named Nim, who lives with her dad on a secret island. Hey, Stokey! The new Alex Rover book. Excellent! But when her island is threatened, she'll reach out to her favorite hero. Dear Alex Rover, my father's lost at sea, and our island's being invaded. I need you, Alex Rover. But I'm not that Alex Rover. Definitely not. She thinks I'm you, and you're not even real. Let's do it. Do what? Go. Be the hero of your own life story. Don't hand me that line. I wrote that line. Let's go save that little girl. What you afraid of? Everything! Now, two people who are worlds apart. Bag check! Not allowed. Not allowed. Not allowed. Next. We'll come together. I'm a 
looking for a fire mountain? You need goat. I don't need a goat. No, thank you. You should wash your hands before you touch anything else. For one extraordinary adventure. I'm going to die. I'm going to agree with you on that one. Abigail Breslin, Jodie Foster, and Gerard Butler. Lynn's Island. I took a plane, I took a helicopter, I stole a boat. <laughs> Unless you're planning on taking your little brother or sister to see this movie, and by little I mean 12 or younger, you might not find Nim's Island so great. Bill Gutekunst of the Arizona Republic says Nim's Island is an old-fashioned kids movie. Parents might find flaws, but the younger set will find characters and a movie worth rooting for. Overall, Nim's Island gets the green light with critics, but not exactly a movie that you should admit to your college buddies that you saw alone. So, Like your college buddies? I'm not going to go see that, actually. I, I don't think I will, either. If I had like my little cousin or something with me. It looks cute, though. Yeah, so. it does. So, I don't know. It might be good. We'll see. Maybe. <laughs> well, coming up, we have Gadgets, Gizmos, and Super Pee Pee Brothers. Stay tuned. In idle news, Ray Miel Malube was voted off Wednesday night after her performance of Do I Ever Cross Your Mind during P Dolly Parton Week. Simon and Randy thought it was a weak performance, but Paula loved her connection with the audience. Paula said on one of her performances, You're a very big talent in a very small package. According to Yahoo News, Jerry Seinfeld from the popular show Seinfeld was in a rollover car wreck Saturday night in East Hampton, New York. After his breaks on his 1987 Fiat BTM stopped working. He pulled the emergency brake and then swerved to keep the car from going into an intersection and came to a stop yards a few yards away from the highway. Seinfeld, 53, did not require medical attention and he returned to his East Hampton home. A classic TV show could be coming to prime time with new contestants and a new host. Entertainment Weekly reports that NBC is in talks to revive Family Feud for a primetime celebrity edition. The show could be on the air as early as this summer. And who are they looking for to host the show? Survey says, TV weatherman <laughs> Al Roker. Well, what would you do for half a million dollars? Lie, live on a deserted island? No. Be, on, be a singing idol? No. What about work for Donald Trump? No. How about spend a nice, relaxing summer living in Los Angeles? That sounds fun. Sounds, fun. sounds easy. <laughs> If this sounds like a good summer idea, then the TV show Big Brother is for you. The CBS hit comedy, hit, excuse me, hit reality show is now casting for its 10th season and auditions are coming to Pittsburgh. Big Brother follows a group of strangers in a house surrounded by cameras and microphones capturing their every move and word. If you're outgoing, intriguing, and competitive, then check out the auditions this Monday, April 7th from 3 to 7 at the Pittsburgh Technical Institute in Oakdale. Kevin, you should try out. Did you hear these qualities? I, <laughs> I've actually watched every single season of Big Brother since really? it came out. And I, I watched the first one. That was it. I'm actually a legal Big Brother um, nut. 
<laughs> so is it a guilty pleasure? Or do you not mind saying that you watch Big Brother? I, I brag about it, actually, openly, on TV. I don't brag. I wouldn't brag about that. It's not the best show in the world. That's just my opinion. You're not the best show in the world. <laughs> Wait, that, that means you're saying that our show is not good. <laughs> uh, let's move on. <laughs> okay. Well, this past Tuesday, ThinkGeek.com was advertising for a game from Japan called Super Pee Pee Brothers. This it, in, in itself was unusual because ThinkGeek does not normally carry video games. However, the game itself was most definitely stranger. The game features a Wiimote harness that you strap on like a pair of underwear and use to virtually pee into toilets. On screen, they had a product picture and a YouTube video example. However, when you wanted to add the item to your cart, you got this screen. Think Geek, you got us. Congrats on an impressive April Fools. That's a good idea. <laughs> I was, I was pretty upset, and so was our producer, Adrian. She actually wanted to get it for her boyfriend. It was so funny. <laughs> I can just imagine the agony of, like, he would love this. I can imagine her sitting there at the yeah. computer. And, oh, that's exactly what and happened, And then just being actually. completely disappointed that, that, it was, that it was a joke. I didn't get anyone on April Fool's Day this year, did I you? I got a lot of people, actually. I got quite a few people. I told my entire dorm hallway that uh, my dog passed away because my dog actually visits like because he's small he's like a little Yorkie and um, I think I've seen your dog then <laughs> probably and uh, I told everyone that my dog Willie died and I went I like started to get like tears and everyone was like oh give me a hug and then I was like April Fools they were so mad so wow that was my big joke I guess but good for you I didn't get anyone so yeah well, <laughs> you, maybe you should have I should have actually <laughs> Well, in clock news, actually, uh, do you ever have trouble waking up in the morning? Perhaps you need a little clocky in your life. No, I'm not making up words here. The clocky is a real gadget that literally runs away from you until you wake up. When the alarm sounds, clocky will start to beep. You can either set him to run away immediately, the alarm sounds, or you can set it to snooze and then clocky will start beeping again and run away. Clocky was created by Boston-based designer Guari Nanda and comes in four colors, cocoa, raspberry, almond, and aqua. Clocky is so sold for $50 and is available to buy online. That sounds so annoying. I don't think <laughs> I would get clocky. <laughs> I would not either. I'm not a morning person. I would be very annoyed. I'm just fine with... I wake up, so I'm, I'm, I wouldn't need to chase something around. I, I'm not a morning person at all. I can't so I even imagine. I mean, maybe an incentive because it comes in four different colors. I mean, maybe aqua a cocoa cool. clocky would make me want to chase it around. You in would the get morning. cocoa. Is cocoa your color? I think I would get aqua or mm. raspberry. Look neat. Maybe that would make all the difference. Just the color selection. <laughs> the color selection. Who knows? I, clocky. Let's see. It'd be on your what? This bedside table. I guess in our dorm, it's like. I use I my know. dresser. I, I use my dresser too. So clocky would be on my dresser probably fall on my bed because my dresser is literally right by my bed and maybe crawl on top of me would that be possible well probably what would happen to me is that it would fall off and since I don't have glasses <laughs> or contacts I'd probably trip on it but yeah, whatever so I don't think I'm gonna get that <laughs> <laughs> finally tonight just when you think every old t movie TV show and song has been remade another one rears its ugly head this week Entertainment Weekly learned that Universal Pictures is in its early stages of adapting the 80s TV hit Magnum P.I. My mom would love this to the big screen. Tom Selleck, if you're not familiar with the original show, starred as Thomas Magnum. So 20 years later, who takes the lead? Why not Matthew McConaughey? <laughs> That's right, the annual People Magazine Sexiest Man Alive has been offered the role of Magnum. No word yet if he's accepted the role or if he will grow a mustache for the role. I hope he does both. You hope he grows a mustache. Or the he, mustache and not the rule. He is pretty sexy. I like Matthew McConaughey. He I did just, get Sexiest Man Alive or something a, a couple, couple years of times. Ago. Really? Yeah. You would know that. You're right. <laughs> okay, well, that's all the time we have for tonight. As always, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to tune in next week. We'll have a special look at the Colonial Theater's production of 1776. And be sure to tune in for, for Colonial Sports Center at 930. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great night.